Let us start our lecture today. So last time we were considering this problem, ux, x plus 2ux plus minus fx, right? And, uh, and with the boundary condition, so this, we want to show this equation on 0 to L, all right? And, and we consider the two boundary condition, u0 is 0 and ul is 0. All right, so in order, in order to solve this problem, <coughs> what we want to use is to use the eigenvalue method, right? The eigenvalue method. So what we did is the following, we consider, uh, so, so in this case, we're gonna, um, see that the operator is ux x plus 2 ux. Um, uh, everything. Depends on you. <coughs> All right, so we identify that in this uh, problem, the uh, operator will be everything that depends on you. So that's gonna be uh, ux x plus two ux. All right. So the first step uh, to solve uh, about value problem is to identify the uh, the uh, operator. So the operators will contain all of the terms that depend on you. All right. So in this case, this is depending on you. This depends on you, and this is this the source term because this is something outside. All right. So the eigen, in order to use the eigen uh, value method, what we use is to consider this problem: p x plus lambda p zero. Um, p is zero is zero, and p l is going to be zero. All right. It's clear. Right, so, so in order, in order to, to, to uh, use the eigenvalue method, um, we're going to find a basis for the solution space. So in order to find a basis for the solution space, what we do is to solve this eigenvalue problem. So you have the operator L of V. This is L of V. All right, so this is equivalent with L of V plus lambda V is going to be zero, all right? So after using this method, what we, we hope to find lambda n and phi n such that, so this is real numbers. This is gonna be functions such that, um, um, uh, L of n plus lambda n, phi n is zero. Phi n zero is zero, and phi n of L is also zero. All right. So the idea of the eigenvalue method uh, is to find the lambda n and the phi n. So lambda n will be uh, so n is going to be one, two, three. Right, so so you wanna you wanna find a sequence of eigenvalues and a sequence of eigenfunctions that satisfy this equation. So phi of lambda n plus uh, phi of L of phi n plus lambda n phi n is zero, which means that you have uh, phi n second plus uh, two phi n prime plus lambda n phi n is zero. All right, so the idea behind this eigenvalue method is to find lambda n and phi n such that phi n second plus two phi n prime plus lambda n phi n is zero with the same boundary condition. So one you can find this, one we can find this, one we can find this. We hope uh, that phi n will be an orthogonal basis. And we expand. F 
like a sum when n is equal to 1 to infinity of fn, phi n. All right? So after you find the spice of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions, you hope that this, uh, 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 th this sequence of eigenfunctions uh, will be orthogonal, and that will form a basis for the solution space. And because of that, because of that, what you can do is to expand the solution in terms of all of those uh, 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 phi n, which is the basis. All right. Now, so we look back into this problem, and the standard method is to do the following. So the standard method <coughs> is the characteristic equation. All right, so you have x squared plus 2x plus lambda is equal to 0. All right? And you can see the three cases. All right? So you can see the case number 1, uh, 2 squared minus 4 lambda is greater than 0. Case number 2, 2 squared minus 4 lambda, 0. And case number 3, 2 squared minus 4 lambda is negative. All right? So why do I have three cases? Because I recall you that we have recall that ax squared plus bx plus c is zero. Then we have b minus 4ac greater than zero. b squared minus 4ac is zero. And b squared minus 4ac is negative. All right? So basically, this is what we were trying to do last uh, time. So I explain again. So in the last, in the previous class, what we were uh, trying to do is to solve this boundary value problem. Uh, you have uxx plus 2ux uh, is equal to minus mx. All right? So then you want to have uh, the two Dirichlet rare boundary condition at 0 and at L. All right? So, so what we were trying to do is to try to use the eigenvalue method. So in order to use the eigenvalue method, what you do is first to identify the operator. The operator contains all of the terms that depends on you. All right, so, so here you have uxx plus 2ux, all right? So then you're gonna consider the eigenvalue problem. You have m of phi <coughs> plus lambda phi is zero. Uh, so the point here is, um, is to find all of the lambda n and phi n. So lambda n is the, uh, uh, are the real numbers which are the eigenvalue and phi n will be the eigenfunctions or eigen uh, vectors. So what you try to do is to solve this system. When you solve this system, you can find a, an orthogonal basis. And because of that, you can expand f in terms of all of those uh, uh, eigenfunctions, all right? In order to do that, in order to do that, you're gonna have to solve this equation. So in order to solve this equation, you're going to consider the characteristic function, which is x squared plus 2x plus lambda, with three cases. 2 squared minus 4 lambda is positive, 2 squared minus 4 lambda is 0, and 2 squared minus 4 lambda is negative. All right? Now, so you recall that, um, so I recall you that um, for the second order uh, algebraic equation like this, the three case will be b squared minus 4ac, b squared, uh, to be positive, p squared minus 4ac is, is 0, b squared minus 4ac is negative. All right, so in this case, b is 2. Um, a will be uh, 1, and c will be lambda. All right? So far, so good questions? Right, so, but this is something that we did already. So where is it? So I said that this is done already. <coughs> Someone recognize this question? We did this question already. Yes? We did like the generic case in the last problem, right? Uh, the application, uh, in what? Problem three. Yes, yes. So this is, a, this is problem three in the midterm. This is problem three in the midterm. Problem three. 
in the meantime. All right, so in the meantime, what we were trying to do is try to solve a very similar equation. We have x, um, so you have px x plus 2px plus 2b px plus lambda p is 0. This is 2b px plus lambda f to be 0, p is 0, is 0, and p l. Yeah. All right, so so this is the problem three in the midterm, right? So I put this problem three into the midterm for this book. So so in the midterm we solve this equation: p x x plus two b x plus lambda phi is zero with two zero boundary uh, Dirichlet boundary condition, right? So in this case, uh, in this case b is one. All right. So what did we find? So we um, we found something like, all right. So we found lambda n to be one plus n pi over l squared, and phi n will be uh, exponential minus x sine of n pi. All right. So, yes. Yeah, so this is what we found in the previous class. All right. So, so we just replaced b to be one, and and this is the solution. All right. So indeed, what we so then, which means that you have what you have uh, you have uh, phi n second plus two phi n prime plus one plus n pi of l square <coughs> phi n is zero. All right. And Pn at 0 is 0. Pn at L is going to be 0. All right? So this is all of the uh, eigenvalue uh, problem, right? So this is lambda n. And we hope Pn will form all right so if it is an orthogonal basis you can expand the fan on this basis and you on this basis and can you can you can solve them all right so so the point is that this basis is not orthogonal so they are not orthogonal to each other all right so I explain again so in this case, we want to solve this problem, ux x plus 2 ux is minus f, with zero Dirichlet boundary condition. All right? So by using the previous method, we're going to try to solve the eigenvalue problem, which is this one, with the same boundary condition. All right? So, so this is something that we did in the midterm. And also, we solved in the previous class. Uh, for a general case in which b can be any constant, strictly positive. So this problem is just one special application of uh, problem three in the midterm with uh, the special value of b to be one, all right? So using again those results, we're gonna find, we found that lambda n is one plus n over uh, n pi over l square, uh, phi n will be Exponential minus x sinus n pi x over l, right? This is what we found, and, and basically we you replace into the uh, eigen into the eigenvalue problem, and you you found this phi n second plus two phi n plus 
lambda n, phi n will be zero, you have two zero Dirichlet boundary condition. But the problem is that these vectors are not orthogonal. All right? Why they are not orthogonal? So I'm gonna I'm gonna check them. Uh, uh, I'm gonna check at least for you to see that they are not not orthogonal. So, but those uh, eigenfunctions are not orthogonal. Right? Meaning that the inner product of phi n, phi m, will be different from zero. So, so what is the inner product? So the inner product will be the integral from zero to L of x exponential minus x times sinus of n pi x over L exponential minus x cosinus of m pi x over L dx. All right. And we want to prove that this is different from zero. So, so the, the so why why are they not orthogonal? Prediction. Yes, because this is not self joint, right? So the, the previous method can be applied only in the case when the operator L is self joint. All right. So, uh, so you yeah we want to see that this is not zero. Can can you both sign? Uh, can you both sign on the back of the paper, please? So we're going to check that this is not uh, zero. So we, we have that, OK, the integral from 0 to L of exponential minus 2x sinus of m pi x over L cosinus of m pi x over L dx. All right, so this is going to be this one. So the first step. That I do is I group exponential minus x and exponential minus x. Yes? Uh, how do you really use uh, cosine sorry, of sorry, that sorry. here? Yes. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Um. All right. Uh, Thank you. But when you, um, but like when you take the inner product of like two of the same thing, uh, can't it? So the, the definition of orthogonal is in the product is, is zero, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'm saying like these are two of the same functions, so like they're not the same function. They're di different function with different indexes n and n. Ah, that's the index. Yeah. Right. So if you have the same function, the function has to be zero because <coughs> it's a square. I see. I see. Right. Can you send the back of the paper, please? Any other questions? Yes. So in this problem, we're hoping that they are orthogonal, but this particular example is not, is what we're saying, right? And we're yes, right we want them to be orthogonal, okay. but they are not orthogonal. But that's just for this particular example, correct? This is because this one is not self choice. Okay. Right. So, um, so you're going to have integral from 0 to L, exponential minus 2x, cosinus of n minus n. So the next step is to write sinus, sinus as the difference of the cosinus and cosinus, all right? So you have sinus of this plus sinus of this. That will be cosinus of the difference minus the cosinus of the sum. And then you have one half, all right? Now, now you have
have two integral to integrate. So you're going to have integral from 0 to L of exponential minus 2x, 1 half of cosinus of n minus m i x over L dx. And the other one is minus 1 half integral from 0 to L exponential of minus 2x cosinus of m plus n pi x over L. Yes. All right. Questions? It's clear. Right. So, so I'm going to show that those vectors are not orthogonal. Uh, so in order to show that they are not orthogonal, I'm going to multiply two vectors, n and m. So there are two different vectors. Orthogonal means that you take two different vectors and, and, and they are orthogonal, right? So if you take the same vector, it's going to be impossible because one vector is not orthogonal to itself, right? So I want to show that 0 is different from this inner product, all right? So the inner product of two functions will be the in integral only. So you multiply the, the two functions, you take the integral. So you want to show that 0 is different from those things. Right, so now I'm going to group this guy and this guy into e to the power minus 2x. And the level of it is sinus sinus, all right? So, 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 so this in its, uh, e to the power minus 2x is still for forgetting here, but the sinus sinus will become cosinus minus cosinus. And you have a 1 half. So I'm going to pull 1 half out, and I'm going to again, I'm gonna have 2 integral. In the world of 0 to L of exponential <coughs> minus 2x cosinus of n minus n and pi uh, x over L dx. And the other one is the second term, right? So I'm going to compute uh, each integral separately. Um, so you're going to have the first one, one half, integral from 1 to L, e to the power minus 2x, cosinus of n minus m pi x over L dx. So this is the first integral, right? So here you have the first, the first and this is the second. Now I'm going to compute the first interval, all right? <coughs> all right? So what should I do? Is the question right? Yes. So I'm going to have this is equal to 1 half of interval from 0 to L of uh, e to the power minus 2x d of sinus of n minus m pi x over L, dividing by n minus m pi over L. This is the whole thing. All right? Yes? Is it negative? No. The derivative of sinus is cosinus. The derivative of cosinus is minus sinus, sinus. All right? So, so the first step is because I have sinus of n minus m pi x over L prime will be m minus m pi cosinus of n minus m pi over L. All right, so this is a chain rule, right? So the derivative of sinus will be cosinus, and then you're going to have a factor, right? So those are the formulas that you, you want to go back to calculus and, and review because we are using that like from lectures to <coughs> lectures. Uh, so this is a constant, so I'm going to put it outside. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have 1 over 2. I'm going to divide by that constant, right? Pi over L. Then I have the interval from 0 to L. Exponential minus 2x. Um, D of sinus of n minus m pi x over M. All right? Yes? Uh, why do you divide by the constant instead of just by that? So here I have this function divided by this constant, right? Yeah. So I'm going to pull this constant outside. Yes. 
So why is it multiplied by one half? Uh, yes, this is this is one half outside. So I'm gonna put this here. And one half is because here you have one half. Other right. questions? Right, so here you have one half, you have sinus divided by the constant, so I'm gonna put constant outside and here I don't have I don't have to divide anymore. Right, so this is the constant. So so this gonna give me so this constant will be L over two and minus M pi. Right? Because you divide one, two, something divided by L, so I'm gonna put L up. So here I have A and I have B, B, right? So the formula that we have is A B B is I I B minus B B A. So I'm gonna use integration like that, alright? So this is gonna give me e to the power minus 2x sinus of n minus m pi x over l. This is from 0 to l. All right? Yes? Um, I guess my question about the constant is why did you put it in the denominator? Like This is divided, right? So this is divided by this constant. So this is already there. This is already in the denominator. Right, so I just pull this out. What I do is, oh, okay, yeah, I see, I see. I see. Uh, what I do is, I have one half. I have something be divided by this. I see. This n minus m pi over l. All right. So I'm gonna strip it here. So this one half n minus m pi over. L. Right. Other questions? Right, so I'm gonna use integration by part. So this is A and this is B. Right, so uh, so then you're gonna have minus the integral from 0 to L, sinus of n minus m pi x over L, d of e to the power minus 2x. Right? So this is A, this is B, so A is db is A times B minus B B A. Right? And of course I have to multiply everything with the constant. This is a complicated thing. Because of the N and the M. Right? Um, so, so I explain again. So here you have one half exponential of minus two X cosine of this guy D X. Alright? First step, you observe that sinus prime will be cosinus. Of course, there is this um, annoying term, which is n minus m pi over l. Right? So this constant is annoying. Um, so then you, you're going to have this is equal to 1 half, the integral from 0 to l, exponential of minus 2x, d of sinus of n minus m pi x over l, dividing by this constant, because here you have to divide by this constant. So this is annoying, and then this can create a lot, a lot of mistakes, all right? So, so at the end of the day, I'm gonna have exponential minus two x d of sinus n minus m p i sub l, all right? Now I'm gonna use integration by power, and this is uh, annoying again, because you have a d b, right? So that will be a b minus b d a, right? But those are, Annoying, but but if you do it slowly and carefully, <coughs> then it's gonna be fine. All right. So the first term, I don't touch it. So you have L over n minus m pi um, exponential of minus two x um, sinus of n minus m pi x over L. This is from zero to L. All right. Minus this term. So d of a will be, so here I have two integral from l, 0 to l of sinus of n minus m pi x over l e to the power minus 2x dx. Alright? So here I use the fact that, alright, um, so let, let me do it slower. So we have minus of this, minus 2 times this one. Right? So here I have minus of sinus d of exponential of minus 2x. 
Now I'm trying to get rid of this d of exponential minus 2x. So uh, what I'm doing is uh, I take the derivative of e to power minus 2x. So that gives me minus 2 e to power minus 2x, right? So this minus 2 will go out with this minus, so I have 2 outside. So let us continue. So, but I think this is also in the middle one because I asked you to, to do Fourier transform of exponential. And so in order to do Fourier transform of exponential, these are the things that you have to do. You have to multiply the exponential with cosinus and sinus and you integration by parts, all right? So basically, this is similar to uh, to the next term one. All right. So the first term I don't care. So now I I gonna go to the second term. All right. So I have two over two n minus m pi integral. Um, so I have this term outside, which I don't touch. Sinus of n minus m pi. Right. So well, and then I. Go Take like different from zero to m. This is something that I don't touch. I just want to consider this guy. All right. So how do I integrate this guy? Do integration by five again. Right. So so for for exponential, this is tricky because for exponential, you always have to do twice. Right. So this is midterm one, problem one. Right. When you add uh, uh, sign, um, by the name. So now I'm going to do this uh, business again. I have this uh, plus 2 integral from 0 to L of exponential of minus 2x d of cosinus of n minus m pi x over L. All right? And I have a minus here. And I have n minus m pi x over L. Right? So this you have a minus. Because this is the derivative of cosinus. So here you have cosinus of n minus m pi x of L prime is equal to minus. <coughs> now you have a minus. n minus m pi x of L sinus of n minus m pi x of L. Alright? Now we have the minus because the derivative of cosinus is minus sinus. All right. Uh, so, so because you observe that here I have sinus, so I can see that sinus uh, is the derivative of cosinus divided by, by minus this term. So this I this is why here I have this one. All right. So now I'm gonna do I'm gonna pull this out to the minus uh, to the two again. So what I what I have is two over um, l over two m minus m pi. I have this small thing inside n minus m pi x over l integration from zero to l plus. So I'm gonna pull this outside. I have minus two over minus m pi x over l. Then I have the other term. Let me work from 0 to l from x minus 1 minus 2x d of cosinus of n minus m pi <coughs> over l. <coughs> right? So when you see exponential, you have always to do twice integration with pi. Alright? So exponential is sure is a, a very special function. Would it be on the denominator we have n minus m pi x or what? Uh, yeah, there's no x. There's no x. Can you sign the back of this, right? So here you, you don't have x. So this is just the constant. This is similar to uh, this one here. You don't have x. Right? So this is complicated because this is exponential. Uh, but but it's complicated, but the procedure is, is classic. You just do integration by part twice, and you, you get it. Now, 
Uh, so I, I'm going to explain again. So here, the level of work, so you have something which is unspecific because this is uh, evaluated at the 2.0 and now, right? So the level of work is an interval of exponential minus 2x and sinus. What you do is you do integration by part again. So in order to do integration by part, you observe that cosinus prime will be minus sinus, and you have this constant. So what you do is you, you do d of this guy. So this is d of minus cosinus of n minus m times x <coughs> over l divided by the constant. Right? So now what I do is I pull out a constant. So I have the minus with the 2, and then I divide by this guy. So I have minus 2 n minus m pi over l. The level of a term is this one. Right? Again, I'm going to use this IDB is AB minus B DA. So this is integration by time. All right, so, so I have 2 OL N minus M prime exponential minus 2 X sinus of N minus M prime X over L. And then you have 0 to L. And then you have this constant outside. So here you have 2 m over n minus m pi. <coughs> All right? And, and here I'm going to use e to the power minus 2x <coughs> cosinus of n minus m pi x over l. Um, and the 2 uh, power is 0 to l. Right? And then I'm going to have integral from 0 to l of cosinus n minus m pi x over L, uh, d of e to power minus 2x. Right? And then I have a lot of brackets. Right? So this is complicated. Um, so I explain again. What I do is I'm going to do, so this is the term that I don't touch. I have this constant and minus, so I pull it outside. I have 2 over n minus m pi. So this and this and this will go together to get this term. All right. So, so the level of will be exponential minus two x d of the term inside. Right. Uh, so, so, so this is basically the level of. So I'm gonna have this going here. This cosinus is going here. All right. Now. I'm going to use integration by part again. So this is A, this is B. All right, so you have AB minus B DA. Right? It's horrible. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but this is correct. So, so <laughs> now. Let us try to integrate this again. So I see that d e to the power minus 2x will be minus 2 here, right? So it's going to be, I'm going to replace this guy by minus 2 e to the power minus 2x dx. Right? Because e to the power minus 2x prime is minus 2 e to the power minus 2x. So this minus two, I'm gonna put it outside, and I have two outside. Right. So so now you're happy. Yes. Does that two L over n minus m pi apply to everything after it? Or so this is applied every, to everything inside. And right. This is applied to everything inside. It's just those, not the thing below. So this is going here, and this is going here, here, here. Yeah, but it, the second one is going to the thing to the right of it and the thing below it. So this, the sec well, which one? So that two L over N. This is going to be it. Okay, yeah. Right. All right, so so let us summarize everything. So you're going to have L. So so let me let me write it again so that you see it. <coughs> Pi. This is E to power minus 2X. And minus M Pi over L, 0 to L. So this is the first term, right? The second term will be this time, this time, this guy. So you're going to have minus um, L over 2 and minus
minus m i times 2L over n minus m pi times d to the power minus 2x uh, cosine s of n minus m pi x over m 0 to l and, and then you're going to have plus l over 2 n minus m pi 2l n minus m pi times two times <coughs> two times of the integral from zero to L of course and as of N minus M pi over L exponential minus two X yes. Right? So this is the final final thing. There's a minus here and here you have a plus. Uh, This is minus, and yes, this is plus because here, you first I have one, right? So here I have minus, out of here I have minus two. Yes, thank you. Can you sign the back of the Yes, so this is the final form, right? Questions? So, so. After all of these horrible computations, I have this term times this one. So that gives me the first one here. The second terms will be this guy times this guy times this one. And that gives me the second term here. Uh, so I want to have this guy times this guy times this guy uh, times this guy will give me L over 2 n minus m pi 2 L over n minus m pi 2. And then I have this into, right? Okay. Questions? Right, so now I'm happy. Why? So how can I add it use the, the value of the integral? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to set this because this is equal to everything. And this is, this is him. Right, so this guy is this guy. Right, so so why do you do the integration by part twice? Because the first one, you in, you differentiate cosinus to get to get sinus, right? And the second times you differentiate to differentiate sinus to get again cosinus, right? So then you get back to this formula, right? So now I'm gonna try the two and I'm gonna find the final answer. Answer. All right. So. Um, so I don't have L over 2 n minus m pi um, exponential minus 2x um, sinus of n minus m pi x over L. This is from 0 to L, right? <coughs> Plus uh, minus. So I have the two, so I'm gonna, so I have L square over N minus M square, pi square, exponential minus two X, cosine of N minus M pi, X over L, then I'm gonna take a difference between zero and L, right? So the last term is minus two L square over minus m square, pi square, the integral from 0 to L, cosinus of n minus m pi, x over L, exponential minus 2 x dx, right? So I copy everything there to here. Right? So this circle will be this, this circle. Now here I have, this is a constant, this is a constant, but this is the same with this one. Right? So let me write in the similar form so that you see it. So this is e to the power minus twice. Alright? So what is the value of the first constant? 
what is the value of this guy? So I'm gonna replace LT and zero here and I take the difference. Zero. Zero, excellent. Can you sign that back of the paper, please? So here you're gonna get zero because here you have sinus, you replace L here, and it's gonna give you zero. Right? So it's give you. So I'm gonna call this the first term. <coughs> Alright, so the first term is gonna be L over 2n minus m pi exponential minus 2L sinus of n minus m pi L over L um, minus exponential of 0 sinus of 0. So this is 0, right? So it's horrible, but it's, it's doable, right? So first term will disappear because it's zero. The second term is a little bit more complicated. The second term. So this is going to be the second term. Now I'm gonna compute the second term, right? So the second term will be minus L squared. Second term over N minus M pi square M pi squared. So exponential minus 2L cosine of N minus M pi minus E to power zero. Right? So it's cosine of zero. So this gives me minus L squared over N minus M squared pi squared times E to the power minus 2L minus 1 and minus M minus 1. Right? So, so, so I, I explain again. For the first term, you replace L and 0 here and it disappears. So this is very simple. For the second term, you also replace L and, L and 0 here. So you have minus L squared over N minus M squared pi squared exponential of minus 2L cosine of N minus M. So you replace L here, so it's going to be L divided by L, so this is 1. The other one is 0. So, so cosine of N minus M pi will be minus 1 N minus M pi uh, minus 1, right? So this is just for you to see. I don't ask you to do this in the exam. Uh, so, so you have a second term. So basically, if I, I, I call this to be, um, say, capital X, so I'm going to have 1 over X is minus L over N minus M squared, I squared, e minus 2L, minus 1, N minus M, minus 1, uh, minus 2L squared over N minus M squared and times X, right? So this is X. This is capital X, right? So if you put those things together, you're going to have one half of X is minus L squared over N minus M squared pi squared times this one. And this guy is minus 2L squared over N minus M squared pi squared X, right? So I'm going to replace that integral by x. So I'm gonna, so to solve x, this is easy. So you have 1 half plus 2L squared and minus M squared pi squared x will be minus L squared over N minus M squared pi squared exponential minus 2L <coughs> minus 1 N minus M minus 1. Right? So what you have to do now is to solve for x. So here you have one half of x is equal to this constant minus 2L squared over n minus m squared pi squared x. Right? To solve for x, you just put this to the other side. You have one half 2L squared over n minus m squared pi squared x is equal to this term. So the final result would be. will be um, minus L square over N minus M square pi square e to power minus 2M minus 1 N minus M minus 1 D 
dividing by one half of two m squared over n minus m squared times one. So I'm gonna replace this x by that integral. Integral from zero to m exponential minus two x cosine of n times n minus m <coughs> pi x over l dx will be this one. This is the final answer, right? So we continue on Wednesday. What about the second integral? Sorry? What about the second integral? So for the second integral, you're going to do the same thing, but I'm, uh, I'm going to explain that on Wednesday, all right?